Hello, and welcome to The Hump with Katie Thoreau. I'm your host, Katie Thoreau. I'm bringing you interviews with some incredible artists, finding out why are they so amazing, how did it all happen, and what can we learn from their journey. Before we get started today, I'd like to thank our sponsors. And first up, we have Jams World. All right, by now, you all know how much I love Jams World. I'm wearing a Jams World right now, of course. It's a family-owned and operated clothing company in Honolulu, Hawaii, since 1964. The clothing is so cool and so comfortable because it's made from 100% spun crushed rayon. And it's real art screen printed right onto the fabric. I absolutely love it. Go to jamsworld.com and use the promo code JAZZ15 to get 15% off your entire online purchase. That's jamsworld.com. Up next, we have Colsteins. I love Colsteins. It's an amazing string shop in Long Island, New York. Anytime I'm in New York City, I make a special trip to Colsteins to see what new things they've got going on. They do everything from instrument repair to building their own instruments. They make really beautiful double basses. They make their own strings and rosin. It's so much fun, and everyone there is just incredibly nice. If you're in the area, make a special trip yourself. It's the Disneyland of basses and everything string instruments. Go to Colsteins.com and use the promo code Katie 10 and you'll get 10% off your entire online purchase or give them a call and you'll get 10% off as well. That's Colsteen.com. I'd also like to remind you that I'm bringing you brand new episodes of The Hump every Wednesday, every hump day. So subscribe, download on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, and follow us on Instagram at The Hump with Katie. You don't want to miss a beat of what's going on over here. I have a really special edition of The Hump for you today, and I'm so honored to welcome Adam Fell. Adam is the president of Quincy Jones Productions. Yes, that Quincy Jones. You know, my goal with The Hump is to find out what makes artists so great and what motivates them, and a lot of the times, it's having a supportive team around you, and that's Adam's job. He oversees the artists, the artist managers, Quincy Jones himself, and also all the little day-to-day things that go into making the music that we love, all the things we don't even think about. I learned so much talking with him. We talked about how he was one of the original founders of True Car and how he went from there to working with Quincy Jones. And he's also an executive producer of two award-winning films, Keep On Keeping On and Quincy. I just had a blast talking with Adam, and I think you'll really love listening to this conversation. So without further ado, here is Adam Fell. Other than that, how's it going? Uh, You know, everything's really good. Uh, I would say that... um, been the weirdest time in my life it's surprisingly busy i feel very fortunate to still have a job and a career um and at the same time uh it's 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 a confusing time to manage artists as you can imagine yeah Uh, because so much of artist income comes from concerts and it's been difficult on some fronts and at the same time it's been like a hard reset on others Mm -hmm. it's been really good for some people to get a break um and you know it's just uh, each case is a different scenario i yeah i totally get you and that's why i wanted to talk to you because managing artists itself is hard to begin with it's not the world's easiest task and you have a bunch of artists plus quincy jones uh so i just kind of want to start from the beginning it's like how do you go from creating you you founded you helped found zag which became true car right i did yeah which which i I used by the way actually to get my first honda crv little plug there and i got an amazing deal uh but how do you go from that to being the president of quincy jones productions i mean i i was like looking at at your bio and like reading some things i'm like is he just He's a boy genius, you know, went to UC Berkeley and he's just like this amazing genius. You're, you're very sweet. I am not a genius. I work with a few geniuses, that's for sure. That helps. On the other side of things, uh, Quincy also uh, was producing a show in uh, Rome, Italy, and it was called We Are the Future. And I was, you know, lowest man on the totem pole on that project but through that project i met a guy named scott painter and scott was the actual founder of zag which eventually became true car so technically i was one of 12 founders on that wow. and um i was i think i was the first hire uh <laughs> it was michelle and myself 
yeah. Uh, that you know, we put together the original presentations and went around. I went around with Scott and did some of the early pitching and did that for about a year and a half. Uh, but Scott always knew and Quincy always knew that you know my passion was in music. And so after doing that for about a year and a half, I came back to work for Quincy full time in around 2006. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's so. that's incredible to go. But I, I guess it's your background in almost analytics would it for true car that kind of helped you with building the, the uh, presentation about offering free music. I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I put that presentation together while I was still in college mm-hmm. and I did that. I did, I, I did a couple of presentations. I did that. I did a, I did a concept that I had early on called meet me at Starbucks, which I presented to Starbucks uh, around that same time. Also with Quincy. Um, but yeah, I was putting together these, these presentations early on, just trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life, to be honest with you. So, but it, you seem like an ideas man, Adam. <laughs> uh, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I'm an ideas guy. Sometimes I, I am not a, just a guy that's working hard behind the scenes. Yeah. And I, that's a great point because you're the president of Quincy Jones now and so you're in charge of the artists, the people who manage the artists. You're in charge of Quincy Jones, uh, music licensing. You're and now you're, um, you know, executive producer. Now you have that that hat on of keep on keeping on and, and Quincy. So, I guess how do you do that? How do you kind of help instill a good team atmosphere with everybody? Uh, the the team atmosphere is is uh i would say really like the reason why we have a team where the vast majority of people have been around for many years and that we operate like a family is because i just simply have good people around me mm-hmm. um you know michael peha Alyssa smith and tomas deport are the three vice presidents of our company and i trust those three with my life they're incredible at what they do. They're detail oriented. They're hardworking. They'll stay up late on a weeknight to get something done. They'll return a call on a weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're not. Uh, they're not ever going to drop the ball, at least not intentionally, and not for lack of trying. And and that's you know I, I just I trust them. You know it, it boils down to that. Yeah, and I know that you guys are all pretty vocal. You guys meet regularly stay on the same page yeah it's been hard it's been harder obviously during quarantine to to keep the same kind of team energy that we that we have normally Mm -hmm. Uh, you know usually we all work in a small office together and you know when you have an issue or you have a problem or you have a uh something you want to celebrate you know everyone's right there you just walk into someone else's little cubicle or office or whatever it is and you know you, you have their attention Right now, it's like we try to do a weekly team Zoom, and I feel like I'm on FaceTime with different pods of my team, like, you know, four or five times a day. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, that that can get fatiguing, as you can imagine, because these virtual things are, you know, don't give you the type of energy that you get from human interaction. Yeah. Um, I mean, pre-quarantine, you know, in normal circumstances, what was a typical day like for you? You know, you'd have someone like Jacob Collier on a world tour, working on some music licensing, licensing, and you've got Q's Bar in Dubai. Like, are are you just available twenty four seven? Like, what's what's going on at, on a on a normal day for you? Uh, Tomas Report installed this thing called Email Meter on my on my Gmail, or he showed it to me, and I think I was averaging about before quarantine about six hundred emails a day. Oof. Uh, as you can imagine, it's just, it's just a lot. Uh, every single second is a question of prioritization, Mm -hmm. right? Um, there are, you know, it's a hard balance. It's really hard balance Mm -hmm. at any given time, right? I, I have projects that I do, um, you know, there's kind of like a scale, right? And that scale is like things that we do entirely because of our heart Mm -hmm. and our passion. And then things that you do 
uh, a little bit because of that, but then largely because of like the money that it makes you. Yeah. And you try to do as much of the heart stuff <laughs> as you possibly can. Uh, but you also, especially during quarantine, when all your concerts get canceled, you end up having to do a lot of the money stuff too. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think as you grow up in this industry, you try to move more towards the things that you're passionate about and that you love. Uh, and at the same time, you know, at least right now, especially, uh, you can't do that all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's not the best answer to your question, but <laughs> the point is, uh, there's five divisions of the company that we focus on. Um, they are the artist management, uh, the production side of things. And when I say production, I mean our TV projects, our film projects, our documentaries, our live concerts, our work with the Montreux Jazz Festival, our work uh, in, in TV for things like specials, so things like the ABC mm -hmm. uh, production we did, the Don Mischer productions, for the opening of the African American Museum, uh, things like uh, keep on keeping on that you mentioned or Quincy the Netflix documentary. Um, then there's the licensing and the endorsement company. Uh, that's where we've worked with companies like, uh, Harman, which has been an incredible partner to us, uh, which is a Samsung company, uh, Apple, uh, Beats, uh, HP, uh, IBM, uh, you know, all sorts of different companies that we've done either corporate events for and produced entertainment for them, or we've been in positions to, to do actual licensed products and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, we have a bunch of joint ventures, uh, one with Better Jafar in the Middle East called uh, G3. We did Dubai Music Week with him. Um, we also have the Q's Bar and Lounge, which you mentioned. Uh, which is a partnership with the Palazzo Versace, which is the Versace Hotel in Dubai. Um, and then, you know, we have uh, a joint venture in Indonesia to build the first ever Quincy Jones Music School on Kura Kura, which is an island off of Bali. Wow. We're very excited about that. Uh, and then we have, uh, you know, Quincy's investment. So <laughs> that's thing. Spotify. Uh, Alibaba, Wayfair, Uber. Yeah, I just uh, imagine like a like a Tuesday afternoon, like someone calling, say, "Hey, um, <laughs> you know, the group for for Dubai just had to cancel last minute. We need somebody else." Oh, hey, Jacob Collier's flight's delayed, and he's not going to make this tour. Oh, the licensing deal. Yeah, we need you to sign off on that. Oh, the editing on this film. Can you okay that? I just kind of feel like that's might be a normal day for you. Yeah, that's kind of a normal day. Am I, am I bringing I, up like, like bad memories? <laughs> You're not bringing up bad memories, but uh, it's hard to explain. You know, every every single day there's something new, and that's uh, one of the many things I love about what I do. I feel really fortunate um, in that you know no day no two days are the same. Mm -hmm. But but at the same time, you're right. You know, there can be days when like eight of those things happen at once and all of a sudden you just are out of your head. Um, luckily, like I said before, I have really, really good people around me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I mentioned Alyssa, Michael and Tomas, but the rest of the team, you know, Brittany and Max and Michael Latour and Adam Hart and Rory Anderson and Armando. Uh, I mean, every single one of these guys are killers. They, yeah. they do an incredible, job at what they do and and usually those things are all happening once you're correct mm -hmm. but i it's only really brought to my attention when it's like kind of like the, the oh crap moment yeah <laughs> um, and i'm dealing with kind of the most severe of those issues yeah uh, because I have, I have a very capable team and they handle it well it seems like it comes from the top down because you you seem like so relaxed um a lot of the time i can feel and i that must permeate through your team members as well because they all seem relaxed. I'm happy. I'm happy to hear you say that. Uh, <laughs> Quincy jokes with me because I'm Chinese on one side and Hawaiian, my mother's Chinese Hawaiian and mm -hmm. I'm Jewish on the other. And so like being neurotic is, is kind of like in my blood. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been a, maybe a lesson I've learned from him. Mm -hmm. uh, he is, definitely the king of like the calm in the storm yeah he's really really good at, at maintaining his composure even during the most stressful times and he just doesn't get stressed out 
mm-hmm. he walks through the fire every single time. And um, yeah, I'd like to think that that's something we're learning from him. Yeah, definitely. And I, I can just tell from him, maybe something else you learned or just along the way is how important relationships are to you, either business relationships, artist relationships. Um, I mean, I know in my life, I can pinpoint specific people that they were there at a certain moment that I could go to them or they really turned me in the right direction. Um, do you have some people like that for you? O- other than Quincy, of course. Right. Yeah. Uh, there's a ton, right? There's a ton of people that have played that role for me. Um, being a mentor and helping guide the direction of kind of how everything went. Uh, it's hard to kind of think of the right people to say on the spot, but um <laughs> It's amazing. Like artist management is a push and a pull, right? You're learning from your artist, just like your artist is learning from you, mm-hmm. right? And so many of my artists have helped me avoid, you know, really bad situations just by their own wisdom hmm. of their own careers. Um, there's a guy named Brian Harden who, very early on, when in my career, I had a, I had the decision of working for Quincy Jones or going to work for MTV. And I remember very clearly him saying to me, if you don't go work for Quincy Jones, you're a complete idiot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was just because he knew, and I didn't quite yet at that time, he knew just kind of the kind of influence, but maybe the respect that Quincy had garnered over the course of his career. Yeah. yeah. He knew that, you know, going to work for someone like that was such an honor. Um, and, you know, uh, gosh, who else has played that role for me? Um Wow. Uh, I've been lucky enough to, with Quincy, have a lot of meetings with a guy named Mike Milken. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's been an incredible uh, voice of reason and, and been really helpful. I'll never forget uh, sitting in Quincy's kitchen with Elon Musk when I was trying to you know, decide with Quincy whether or not we um, would do the Spotify deal early wow. on. Elon was very encouraging of it. And I think that really helped us in that moment. Mm -hmm. Um, Mike Anders, who's our financial advisor, uh, he and his partner, Devesh, have been incredibly helpful to us. Um, You know, I think they've stuck with us, even though um, we're not their typical client. And they've really um, just helped guide us, you know, Mm helped give us their their wisdom and brought us into really helpful situations, but also just been there, you know, from the perspective of, of business counsel. Um, when I'm ever really in a jam, I call my dad. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's, he's, he's definitely uh, been extremely helpful to me as well. Um, those are a few, I don't know. Well, yeah, it's, it's great to, no matter what your profession is, is to have like, you know, a mastermind groups, people around you that you can just call, you know, they'll pick up the phone, not because you're somebody, but because they believe in you and they respect you. And, you know, with the hopes that one day they'll be calling you for, for something that they need help with. But I think that's so important for musicians and artists, us as well, to have people like that, to be able to call upon. But I was going to ask you, like, it's funny, like artists in management, some people are like just so against it. I mean, artists, because, I, you know, many reasons. But so I've seen a lot of relationships crumble. Um, from your experience, like what kind of advice would you give to an artist who who has management? And maybe there's like a little bit of friction. Uh, <laughs> I've learned so many lessons. It's funny. I was I was talking to Jacob the other day. Uh, and I was sharing with him a lesson I'd recently learned about how, you know, your job as a manager is not to fix someone's personality mm-hmm. or their, um, you know, like even if you see shortcomings, uh, you know, like like that's not your job. You're not their psychiatrist. Yeah. Right? Oftentimes you you end up in conversations where you feel like you're their psychologist, but that's not your job. Mm-hmm. Your job is to really listen to them. And when you hear what their dreams are, when you hear what their goals are, help create a plan to get to those things. 
and wow. do it in a way that, you know, with your knowledge of who they are, um, won't violate kind of their ethos. Yeah. And I think, I think that that's a really hard thing. I think a lot of managers think that their job is to kind of like trick their artist into success or to, um, you know, like, uh, fulfill their own dreams. Mm-hmm working with that artist you know take the number one even if yeah. the artist doesn't want to be at number one right yeah. and uh i don't i don't see that as the, the job of the manager mm-hmm. i think the job of the manager is to listen you know and and also just to play a role you know there is no such like uh i was on i was lucky enough to be on a call with with sal the, the weekends manager uh, a couple weeks ago and i heard him on the call say um, I don't think that there are managers. I think there are manage management team. Yeah, there is no one guy that does anything. Uh, if you're doing management correctly, it's because you have an operational team that serves the function of management. Mm-hmm. And uh, that really stuck with me. Um, yeah, because he's exact. He's exactly right. I could not do this without the incredible people around me. Um. And that has become more and more and more apparent. I used to, I mean, I used to, you know, when I started working with Quincy, I was kind of a one man guy, a one man thing. Mm -hmm. When I started working with Alfredo Rodriguez in 2007 or so, when when Quincy came, 2006 was when Quincy came back from the Montreux Jazz Festival and said that he wanted to work with Alfredo. And Alfredo was my first management client. And when I first first started working with Alfredo, yeah, it was kind of just me and him. Yeah. And my assistant at the time, Rebecca. Um, but yeah, it was just us, kind of. Uh, but these days, it's nothing like that. Mm-hmm. These days, uh, there's an entire team. And, you know, I can, I can loop Alyssa Smith in when I need help on social media. Yeah. I can loop Michael Latour in when I need help on finance. And I can loop Tomas Deport in if I need help thinking about a technology partner for something. Mm-hmm. All these people add value. I mean, there's a guy named Ben Bloomberg from the MIT Media Lab that I met because of Jacob. Ben is incredible, right? And it's, it's, it's this whole thing of surrounding yourself with people that you respect and, and that you can rely upon especially when you get into territory where you're not as comfortable. Yeah. Always like, Hey, I don't know how to do this, but I know this person on my team that that's their specialty. They'll kick butt. Let me pass it on. Cause I think a lot of times that artists, like when they have a manager, they go, okay, I don't have to do anything. My manager's just going to take care of it. So how do you, so that's if my that, other question. If that were the case, if that were the case, then management contracts would be 50, 50. Yeah. Right. So my why, next question is, is how do you, um, if you see like you have an artist and of course you, like you're saying, like I'm helping somebody be- believe in their dream, follow their dream. So I'm helping somebody. But what do you do when you see an artist that has lost their motivation to pursue their dream? How Do you continue to motivate them? Like I said, you know, we're not psychologists, yeah. right? We, we end up we end up being friends right in many scenarios and and as a good friend of course if you see if you see another friend that is losing their motivation and that is not pursuing their dream you're going to encourage them mm-hmm. but but you're not their parent and you're not their psychologist so there is no kind of like forceful hand here mm-hmm. um you know I, I think you you approach all of those scenarios with love and usually people go through their own cycles that they're of their process you know my, as you can tell i'm not giving examples here because i'm not <laughs> i'm not going to violate the trust i'm not going to incriminate artist. you don't worry adam um but but you know plenty of artists that we work with go through this mm-hmm. right they go through that moment of like just self-doubt mm-hmm. and you know moments of of creative roadblock and you know, they, they kind of get themselves through that. Our yeah. job is to be supportive, like a family member, mm-hmm. right? Uh, remember that, you know, we, we can be like a safety net to help them get through it. Yeah. And and yeah, sure. You know, like if the amount of times that, that we end up being like 
you know, in a position to help an artist financially get through a tough time or mm. uh, help refer them to even a doctor, you know, I mean, yeah, those, those types of scenarios exist for yeah. sure. Um, where we're actually tangibly helping them get through that process. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, people, people kind of go through those things on their own and, you know, you just hope that you provide enough ideas and opportunities that they naturally get through those things. Yeah. Well, and then you have the other end of the spectrum where you have, I mean, an obvious example of yours is someone like Jacob Collier or Richard Bono who are extremely prolific, almost to the point where it's 24 seven nonstop. So how do you also nurture someone who has trouble, you know, reining it in a little bit for their own sake, you know, of their own sanity? I, I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) Jacob Jacob deciding to do a four album project for Jesse uh, and release fifty songs, uh, as you can imagine. Like, you know, we we are constantly encouraging him uh, to take a break because he deserves it because his output is so incredible. Right? Yeah, I mean, you look at the amount of content he puts through, the amount of interviews he has to do, the amount of social media he does. The amount of actual material he is releasing mm-hmm. i mean it is absolutely bonkers yeah I, I i i could never do it and i don't know anyone else that could mm-hmm. he's, he's the guy so yeah do do we ever end up in a position where we're fighting for his space all the time you know michael Pea and michael latour i'd say a ton of their job is, is helping to organize things to the extent that Jacob can take a break. Wow. Um, yeah, that, that job ends up being the case a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. Richard Bonna, who you mentioned, who's so prolific, yeah, Tomas Deport and Brittany, uh, they, they do the exact same thing. You know, it's try to help him, um, you know, take, take a breather. You know, if it weren't for, if it weren't for COVID, Richard Bono would have done his eighth year in a row of like 110 concerts. Well, I was, um, <laughs> I played his new club in, in Paris, uh, Club Nubia last year. And I was, he was doing all the booking himself. And I was, it was like the day before we were still, we were on a tour in Europe. And I was, I was giving him, I was giving him a space, but I was like, you know, we need the, uh, the hotel reservation. And he takes a picture with his phone. It's his hand. He's in the hotel at three in the morning with the hotel reservation waiting for us. And I'm, he's just like, until someone else I can trust that can do this, I'm going to do it. And I was, you know, I respect that, but I was like, wow, this guy, that's dedication. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's Richard. And he is just as serious as could be. Yeah. Um, and, and I love that about him. He's, yeah. I mean, I, you know, as, 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 as you can imagine, it's an honor to work with these guys because, they they elevate our standards, right? Mm-hmm. And, and they constantly push us to take that level of care that you're talking about with mm-hmm. everything we do. Too. Yeah. And it's like, I guess with most artistic or entrepreneurial professions, you can go to school, but there's no school that really teaches you any of this, how to be prepared. So, I mean, your school is just being prepared in the moment, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's a, that's an interesting question. Uh, I don't know how you prepare for this type of job. Uh, you, you know, I think I think it's it's a lot of things, but you have to learn real empathy mm-hmm. early on, um, and kind of understand human interaction and understand uh, human connection. And then just apply that sensitivity, essentially, um, to every scenario. Uh, and you know, you can come, you can come off of a call from ten to eleven a.m. where you're screaming and fighting and like, you know, complain, like, you know, literally like angry at a label or whatever. Yeah. The call that's like the next hour where you're on with an artist, you know, kind of like gently pleading for uh, something for that that other artist, right? Yeah. And you have to go straight out of like that, like, 
very high energy anger into something that's like way more like, you know, closed in and soft and humble. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, that, that's a hard thing about this job too. I will be totally honest. Like I didn't remember that I had this interview, right? Like, yeah, so yeah. like I just, you know, I'm, I, I got something every single hour except for lunch today. Mm-hmm. And it came to this. And Jeremy sent me a Skype and I'm still in my pajamas because I've been on call since 8 a.m. And I'm working from home and in quarantine. And, and he said, there's the Skype. And I was like, wait, it's a Skype. I'm on video. <laughs> and so I like ran downstairs, got changed and come back up. But I mean, that's, that's the nature of this job, right? Like, uh, Alyssa has been saying to me that I should do more of these sorts of things. So I'm, trying to even though it's really not my nature well yeah and it's like you said you're not a psychologist but it almost is that type of profession like you're saying you have such a range of emotions during the day so when the day is done like how do you take care of yourself like who takes care of adam you're taking care of everybody uh that's very sweet of you to say i have an incredible wife uh lindsay fell and she is a thousand times better than I am at shutting off work yes. and focusing yeah. on, um, you know, real life, mm-hmm. you know, the things that are actually important. Yeah. And so I'm trying to learn that from her. Uh, I, I'm not very good at it. I am, you know, I'm the type of person that lays in bed for half the night and grabbing my phone, which is next to the bed yeah. every couple hours and shooting a text at 3.33 in the morning to my assistant saying, remind me tomorrow morning to do this for this artist. Remind me, you know, tomorrow afternoon to do this for this artist. I have to schedule a call with this person tomorrow. I have to remember to do that paperwork that I forgot to do the last three weeks. You know, and it's like my list is always like, you know, 80 items more than I'm ever going to achieve in any given week. And that's just, it's a life you kind of learn to live with. Uh, and as I said, I'm trying to learn how to kind of shut it off. I'm not very good at it. But I have well, to yeah, but it comes, it's not coming from desperation where some people have their phone by their bed because they're like, oh, I'm, I'm waiting for this call because I need to make this deal or else. It's like you're doing it out of the care for, for, the, for Quincy, for your artists. It's not like a, a last act desperational move. You're just trying to get shit done. <laughs> True. And I'm trying to remember a lot of things. You know, <laughs> yeah. you're, if you're, uh, as uh, we manage a new client named Yeti Beats, mm-hmm. um, who happens to be a uh, longtime friend of mine. You know, we've known each other since literally preschool, as crazy as that sounds. Uh, and as I said to him yesterday, when you decide to manage someone, it's almost like you're deciding to marry them. Mm-hmm. Like, if you do this right, you're going to talk to them multiple times per week. Yeah. You're going to be thinking about them all the time. And that's, that's the thing is like, as a manager, you're like there to pick up the slack. You're just part, you're an extension of the artists themselves to make sure they get the stuff done. Mm-hmm. And like I said previously, if you're doing this right, you're a management team. So yes. have multiple people that are kind of always on and always thinking about what that what needs to get done for that person yeah um and yeah you know when when you get to be you know in in the shoes that i'm in you you end up in a situation where no matter how organized you are no matter how many lists you make you know based on the kind of slate that you started listing before you did a very good job of it by the way um, there's just no way that you can have like a rational list and go through the day and follow like, I'm going to do number one now, now, then number two, then number three, yeah. right? You're just, you're going through that list, but then somewhere between two and three, you get hijacked by this crazy emergency exactly. here. And then, you know, that takes you out of commission for two days, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> and like, you know, when, when that sort of stuff just keeps happening, it's very difficult to stay on a path, but you know, the, as long as you have the good people and you have the ethos and you have the right like kind of communal goal uh, everything keeps going in the right direction i think yeah that's the way 
so far. Exactly. Everything falls into place. Yeah, it's funny. My husband, Matt, got, uh, he was like, you should get this app to Doist because it's like this list thing and it reminds you. And I tried it for one day. I was like, man, that is not, I, 20 <laughs> other things came up in my mind that I wanted to do. And you're telling me I can't move on until I do this thing? No. Um, I, I just, I don't want to take up too much more of your time because you're, you're still in your PJs. But um, is there anything coming from QJP, from the production company that you're allowed to talk about that's coming out new or anything that you, you're really excited about? All of it, you know, I, I, gosh, um, all of it. I mean it. Yeah. I'm like not kidding. You asked that question and I think of the, this new song of Richard Bonas that I just heard that is so incredible. Mm -hmm. And I think of like this, Thing that Jacob just did that was sent around to the team that is so gorgeous and I think of this folder that Justin just shared with me that is ridiculous I think of this TV show that we just got greenlit at ABC that I can't wait to make I mm. think of you know the, the the act we just booked at Montreux Jazz I think of um, a lot of things it's, it's all I'm fortunate to say I'm living uh you know, I'm doing things that I love. That's and, awesome. And therefore, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, and I'm so happy that. to see from all the QJP artists, like, okay, Jacob Collier is always doing his thing, but he's doing it, you know, even more. He's so accessible. Richard Bona, uh, Alfredo Rodriguez, you know, online doing stuff, and Justin Coughlin always doing stuff live. And I, I love that your artists kind of have that vibe too, of like giving, always giving as well. So that's really cool. Um. Just one final question. What do you, um, I, you don't have much time for anything, but what are you into now? Like music, movies, it could be food, anything. I want to say two more things that I forgot on that list. Oh, please. Shalea is working on a new project that I'm so darn excited about. And uh, I can't quite talk about it yet because it's not announced yet. Okay. But, oh my God, I'm excited about that. Cool. And uh, we're, we're working on a, a film that has to do with Alfredo that I'm so excited about. Oh, awesome. Um, so anyways, now moving into your, your next question, uh, do me a favor and ask it again. <laughs> Sorry. Cause I'm still thinking about that. No, no, no. It's cool. Yeah. See, you're, you're not, you don't turn off. Um, which is part of this question. You're always listening to your artist and things coming in and out. What are you kind of mm, into yeah. right now? Like music, movies, anything that's kind of like sparking your interest. All right. Music. Um, Son of Cloud. Okay, an album by by an artist named Son of Cloud. His real name is Jonathan Seal, that I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, wow, that's an incredible project. Um, what else am I listening to that I'm really excited about? Uh, can I get back to you on that one? Yeah, you can. <laughs> what else am I watching? What else am I watching? Um, it could be old. Too. I watched. I watched a movie the other night with my wife Lindsay uh, called "The Peanut Butter Falcon." Uh, it was a movie about a kid with Down syndrome, mm -hmm. and it was so sweet and so touching, and I loved it. Um, hmm. Uh, I was lucky enough to be involved in Paula Dupree Pesman's charity fundraiser last Saturday night. Yes, that was um, awesome. There was care. A, exactly. It was a uh, event for Paula's foundation. Paula spends most of her time taking care of families that have a critically sick kid. Mm -hmm. So if your kid, if your kid gets cancer or your kid is, um, diagnosed with some rare illness and they're fighting for their life Paula takes care of you and your family yeah, that's and incredible. It's, it's, neat. it's a need that she recognized because she was producing the Harry Potter movies and she was in charge of the Make-A-Wish Foundation mm -hmm. and she would bring these critically ill kids to meet Harry Potter mm -hmm. and she kept realizing that their families were in such terrible situations because she was 
um, yeah, she'd realized that families were like living in their cars while undergoing yeah. chemotherapy stuff, you know, like just like this awful, awful stuff. And so she recognized the need for it. She started the foundation and now they've taken care of more than 4,000 families. And, That's beautiful. Um, the work that they do is not, you know, it's not the sort of thing where like, uh, uh, people because of politics or something silly like that fall on one side or the other. It's just like an unequivocal need. So we were lucky enough to work with her on that, uh, that little fundraiser on, on Saturday. And they, they, I'm proud to say every single artist that we work with agreed to do a video. Um, and so many of the artists that we don't work with, including some of the artists that, you know, we used to manage, but we don't manage yeah. anymore. Um, Every single one said yes, uh, and the performances were absolutely incredible. And between that and like the heartfelt nature of the event, um, I think it did really well. I don't know if they've announced how they did yet, but they, I think it did really well. That's wonderful. So yeah. Well, Adam. That inspires me. Um, I'm gonna let you get back to maybe relaxing for a little bit, but I want to thank you so much for. Um, for being our guest on The Hump, because usually The Hump is all bass players, but every couple episodes I'd like to have a non-bass player or someone from the music industry. So thank you. I, I'm so excited to see what Quincy Jones Productions has coming next. I can't wait. Katie, I can't wait to see what you're happy, what you have next. <laughs> um, I just, I love what you and Justin do together and um, yeah, feel really fortunate tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Adam. Thanks so much for taking the time. And continue to be safe. Thanks, Adam. You too, Katie. All right. Bye.